Harry, 37, and Meghan, 40, visited New York City in September for a packed schedule of public engagements. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex were pictured holding hands and putting their arms around one other TMS shoulders during the visit. The trip was their first major public outing since Meghan gave birth to the couple TMS second child, Lilibet Diana, in June. The Sussexes visited the 9-11 memorial, and Meghan read from her book, The Bench Trademark at a local school. The pair also attended the Global Citizen Live concert, where they call for the more equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccine doses across the world. The couple TMS close interactions during the tour were typical of their genuine relationship, according to US-based body language expert Blanca Cobb. She told Express.co.uk that Harry TMS tactile interactions with Meghan Don TMT adhere to the royal family TMS rules for showing affection in public. She said, even though he's royalty, as we know, he bends those rules when it comes to PDA, public displays of affection. While there is not an official code of conduct for PDA between royals, etiquette dictates that couples adapt their behavior to the formality of the occasion. Ms. Cobb said, sometimes with the royal family, it's more appropriate to show so much public affection. But Harry bends the rules a little bit, where he TMS going to hold hands and he TMS going to get physically closer and stand closer to Meghan. They'll touch each other's backs in support. They touch each other's hands. It's very nice to see. So, I just think his love triumphs over all. This week, Harry will return to New York City ahead of Remembrance Day this week to honor servicemen and women as he hands out medals to five military veterans. The Duke of Sussex will attend the Salute to Freedom Gala on November 10 at a museum centered around the former aircraft carrier, USS Intrepid. Harry is himself a veteran, having served in the British Armed Forces for 10 years and completed two tours of Afghanistan. His latest trip to New York City follows the Queen TMS confirmation in February of this year that her grandson would lose his military titles. The dramatic announcement came nearly a year after the couple officially stepped down as senior royals and moved to the US. The military titles Harry lost included, Captain General of the Royal Marines, Honorary Air Commandant of RAF Honington and Commodore-in-Chief, Small Ships, and Diving. And we see this in their body language, how they're holding hands, how they continually look at each other when the other is talking. She added, it's a genuine, beautiful love that they share. And it truly is them against the world. That comes across in their body language. I believe that they're vulnerable with each other, which is fabulous. Even from their Christmas cards to everything that I've analyzed with them, they're really a solid couple and they just have a genuine loving relationship, and it is really nice to see. Princess Beatrice and her husband Edoardo Mopelli Mozzi welcomed their first child together earlier this month. Beatrice shared the news on her official Twitter account, writing, so delighted to share the news of the safe arrival of our daughter on Saturday 18th of September 2021, at 23.42, at the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, London. Thank you to the midwife team and everyone at the hospital for their wonderful care. The couple are yet to confirm the name of their daughter, despite other royals such as the Cambridges, doing so after just a couple of days in the past. As Beatrice prepares for parenthood, it appears she has already had some practice with her stepson Christopher Wolf Motsi, known as Wolfie. However, this didn't come without difficulty. Beatrice told Hello. Magazine, homeschooling, that was definitely not my forte. Not going to lie. Sadly, I can TMT blame that on dyslexia. But I TMV felt very lucky to have had the chance to work with my bonus son over the course of the school closures. It was a huge learning curve for all of us. Wolfie was best man and page boy at Beatrice and Edo's socially distanced wedding in July 2020, showing that the family have a tight-knit relationship. Among the handful of guests were the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, alongside the couple TMS parents and siblings. She continued, 
If any child, any bonus son, or future babies that are on their way, are lucky enough to be diagnosed with dyslexia, I feel incredibly grateful to have tools such as the Helen Arkell Center to be able to tap into, to give them that extra support. I think it TMS really important for every parent, that they feel they are not alone in this. My husband TMS also dyslexic so we TMLLC whether we TM re having this conversation in a couple of months trademark time with a new baby in the house, but I really see it as a gift. In April, it was reported that Beatrice has narrated a book for dyslexic children. The book is titled Extraordinary People, and is written by Kate Griggs. Ms. Griggs is the founder of a charity, made by dyslexia, which Beatrice is also a patron of. Royal family friend, Sir Richard Branson, also wrote the foreword for the book, as a fellow dyslexic person. Speaking about the project, Beatrice said, it TMS no secret that I struggled with my dyslexia as a child and often even wished it away. But now I see it as a tremendous gift and I want every dyslexic child to know that they too can tap into their dyslexic strengths. As well as narrating the animated version of the children's book, Beatrice also appears in an introductory video online. In it, she adds, Hello, ITMM Beatrice. What you may not know about me is that I am made by dyslexia, which was a bit of a struggle when I was at school but now, thanks to all the practice and a lot of support I feel so lucky to be made by dyslexia. Beatrice's sister, Princess Eugenie, has also discussed becoming a new mum this week. Ellie, who became mum to son Arthur with her husband, Casper Jopling, in April, said, there's a huge sense of camaraderie among new mums, not only dealing with being pregnant, but then breastfeeding, and just figuring it all out. It seems like motherhood is a time when you can never say too much about what's going on, and I'm grateful for that. She added, she's been a great friend throughout this. We've talked a lot about pregnancy and she's been inspirational because she just takes everything in her stride. Message to the Canadian public, Her Majesty joined the country on its day of truth and reconciliation. Today is the first time the country will mark its national day for truth and reconciliation. She said, I join with all Canadians on this first national day for truth and reconciliation to reflect on the painful history that Indigenous peoples endured in residential schools in Canada, and on the work that remains to heal and to continue to build an inclusive society. The message was also translated into French on the Royal Family Twitter account. Her Majesty's message was also accompanied by a tweet which read, Her Majesty the Queen has sent a message to the people of Canada to mark the country TMS first national day of truth and reconciliation. Following her message to the Canadian public, Royals fans expressed their delight at the Queen's touching tribute. Laurie Lever said, My deepest respect to Her Majesty the Queen. Thank you on behalf of the country. Rick Cummins simply said, Bravo. Today marks a moment where Canadians came together to honor victims and survivors of the country's residential school system. To commemorate those forced to join these schools, Canadians have been urged to wear orange. Orange was the color worn by First Nations residential school survivor Phyllis Webstad on her first day of school it was later removed. Ms. Webstad, the creator of Orange Shirt Day, said, the color orange has always reminded me of that, and how my feelings didn't matter, how no one cared and how I felt like I was worth nothing. All of us little children were crying and no one cared. The schools were established to forcefully assimilate indigenous children. It resulted in thousands being separated from their families to attend the schools. Approximately 140 schools were created in the 19th and 20th centuries. Over the summer, more than 1,000 unmarked graves were discovered. On the eve of the day, a ceremony was held where survivors of the residential system shared their stories of childhood trauma. Justin Trudeau also spoke at the event and told all Canadians to mark the day. The Prime Minister also stated the day was for all Canadians. He said at the event, do not tell me, or try to explain, that the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation is a day for Indigenous Canadians, it is a day for all Canadians. 
Take a moment to listen to the stories of a survivor, to an indigenous elder who shares their perspective and their experiences in this country. And know that that story, their story, is your story as well.